Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Transnet finally released its results for the 2018-19 financial year this week. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss what they mean for the transport utility and what they signal for state-owned companies more generally. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. Why did it take so long for Transnet to issue its results? Well, I think the big thing is a, a dispute with its external auditors uh, around irregular expenditure generally, but a specific uh, component within that irregular, irregular expenditure figure relating to uh, pre-qualification of tenderers in various projects, which the, uh, the, the external uh, auditors see as irregular and Transnet didn't. It's not the biggest component of the external, uh, of the irregular expenditure figure, which is massive. It's nearly 50 billion rand, 49 billion rand. Last year it was already large at 8 billion rand, but now we've seen the, the locomotive contracts have also been included in that figure. So all those, uh, so it's really a, a large part of the order book of Transnet is either seen as either irregular, and in some cases, as in the co case with the 1064, the 1064 locomotives, diesel and electric, that they procured, those aren't only seen as irregular, but as illegal contracts. So uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a dire picture on that front, even though the business itself um, is uh, still a 70 billion plus uh, revenue entity and still made a healthy profit of uh, 6 billion rand. So on that, on that front, I think that was a, a better picture for South Africans because we're not used to many of our state-owned companies coming in with uh, profits and also their funding uh, is in place um, for, the, the, for the coming year and even into the next. Are there signs that Transnet is starting to get to grips with state capture? Yeah, I think that th although that there's that devastating irregular expenditure figure of 49 billion rand, that is part of the process of getting to grips with the state capture era. We know it's permeated every state-owned company and many departments in government, and it's really been an overhang on uh, confidence. It's an overhang on investment. And I suppose the sorting out of that uh, is also causing uh, reactions, you know, in terms of morale at state-owned companies and uh, uncertainty uh, around the future of many of these entities. So Transnet was one of the, the largest uh, sort of platforms for the state capture and it permeated uh, all aspects of its business uh, from railways and, and ports. But the main really is the Transnet freight rail and uh, the issues around the 1064 contract uh, which is not only seen as irregular but unlawful. There are now sort of serious talks underway with these, the, the three, four OEMs, China South Rail, Bombardier Transportation, uh, General Electric, as well as China North Rail, to see if some sort of settlement agreement can be reached around these contracts. Um, and it seems, you know, the, the horse has bolted in many ways, and uh, Transnet does need some of these locomotives. I mean, General Electric's already finished with its contract and delivered its locomotives. China South Rail is very advanced in delivering its locomotives. And it's a, there's a bit of a lag, I suppose, in the, the last two. So it's going to be interesting to see what Transnet really gets out of these settlements. Um, uh, will they have a much better maintenance agreement or lower cost maintenance arrangement? Will they cancel certain of the orders that are uh, in place with the, the two companies that are, are still some way away from actually delivering? Will there be different uh, service level agreements? It's really up in the air, but I think at least there's an acknowledgement that there's a problem um, and there is some action at last in actually trying to get a settlement. There were massive delays in trying to meet some of the companies. Those delays now seem to be out of the way. So there, there are signs, I think, that Transnet's getting its hands around a st a state capture. There's also a number of executives that have either left or on suspension and hopefully we'll see those disciplinary processes move ahead. We see at SARS, for instance, there's been movement this week uh, on, on people leaving the organization. And I suppose uh, um, Transnet also wants to try and accelerate that process. What do these results and the recent ANC NEC statement signal for SOEs more generally? Well, if a, a company as healthy as Transnet financially is almost unable to meet the six month post-year-end deadline for publishing results, you know there's a problem. 
and it's going to be even a deeper problem for those that are in financial dire straits. So we know that SAA and SA Express and Alex will definitely miss the deadline. Um, Eskin didn't miss the deadline. They had published, but they were dire uh, results. So it's, it says that these uh, entities, many of them are still in a very difficult position. Transnet probably less so because of its financial health. And uh, it also shows that uh, state-owned enterprises are not necessarily going to be uh, the leaders or at the vanguard of any investment drive that is used to stimulate the economy, uh, as was the, the view that it would be. And uh, post the great financial crisis, uh, it was seen that the ESKIMs and the Transnets would lead the investment charge, and that would help uh, sort of stimulate growth in the economy. That uh, has failed dismally. And we are now looking, and I think the NEC statement's fairly frank, we're now looking at uh, the private sector more and more to play that role to stimulate the economy. In some cases, there's going to be strategic equity partners, in some cases, asset sales. And I think um, uh, you know, the state-owned companies are going to really be in a, a sort of, they need to be healed and nurtured back to health uh, 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 rather than leading any big stimulus in the, the, uh, in the economy. So I think that's really what uh, Transnet results, but generally Eskom's results and, and, the st and the dire state of many state-owned companies is telling us that we, in to, we have to enter a new phase where we have to rely more and more either on the private sector to invest or on public-private partnerships to try and get this very important economic infrastructure. There are backlogs. There are serious backlogs in transport and logistics but there are also, we know, emerging backlogs in energy supply and electricity supply specifically that need to be filled. And they're not going to be filled if we rely only on this balance sheets and the, the, the skills and the management of these state-owned companies. Thank you. That's the second Take Show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News Daily Email Newsletter.